Hey guys, so this is my worldwide collection, or uh, my grandpa's worldwide collection, so I just finished it moments ago. Let's take a look. So, um, it's actually got right here a chunk of Christmas stamps right at the beginning. And um, yeah, there's definitely some missing from uh, the alphabet here, but he's got a, a few sheets. So. That's right, they're all from Must have been a nice album to have that whole thing. So yeah, this is the beginning of um, his worldwide collection. I ordered it from A to Z, uh, except for one little tiny snafu with Panama. Uh, but um, everything has been ordered using the Scott catalog. And... Um, yeah, I've identified every single stamp, at least in his worldwide, that he has. Um, holy moly, it took, took forever. And uh, everything goes from left to right in the rows. Um, and pretty much every single one I tried to do. Scott number of the year, the price, uh, a description, you know, um, also the... Uh, you know, like A101, that's the uh, picture number in the catalog. So. Argentina. Australia. Most of his stamps are minimal catalog value. That one's a buck seventy five. Not bad. Off Australia, off to Austria, So yeah, pretty major labor of love, this uh, this book. Also, since I started alphabetically, these earlier ones uh, are definitely 
when I was learning things, and this was all still pretty new, um, and um, slow, very slow going for me. I was still learning the catalog and all that, so this got easier. It got a little bit cleaner as I got going with it. Um, definitely closer to the end is uh, where I just finished and it's uh, uh, as good at doing this as I've ever been as, uh, <laughs> at the end so this was a massive labor of love uh, I want to say like hundreds of hours actually cataloging every single one of these and the interesting thing is you know some countries are easier than others for sure but um, I could blow through like three columns and then er, stop at one stamp and just have the hardest time figuring out what that stamp is um, for all kinds of different reasons be it little millimeter measurements or poor watermark I can't see or uh, color doesn't match or something you know um, or I just can't seem to find it um, that definitely happens um, So yeah, most of this has been done on the weekends. I did definitely work on the weekdays too, but this is kind of a lazy Sunday and Saturday uh, thing to do. And since I started in, let's see, October of 2020, um, I'm doing this six, six and a half months uh, working on this book. So it took, took a really long time, and I don't think that I'm far off of saying easily over a hundred hours, maybe a couple hundred, I mean, it, this took so much freaking time. Um, yeah, it's astounding to me. This is probably one of the most tedious projects I've ever done in my life, uh, but uh, I'm glad that I did it. It's definitely a nice tribute to uh, Grandpa. If he were still alive, I think he would enjoy a nice look at this to see uh, his lifelong stamp collection, <laughs> given its proper attention. This is Bulgaria. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, see, like, this one's worth, worth a buck thirty. Um, some of these are worth stuff. Not a whole, whole lot, but some for sure. Some of them, I just, for the life of me, could not figure out. That one, I had no idea. No idea what that is. So yeah, um, since it's ordered by Scott number and using the catalog, basically all of the definitive and official, whatever, general issues are all um, first, and then we move to the back of the book stuff um, after. So I, I really tried to have some logic to this thing. And, um, you yeah. This was me experimenting with different uh, size rows um, on these Vario pages. So this is a 5S page, I think. Uh, so yeah, I was just trying to find what would work when I made this album as I did it, you know. This size paper, maybe I want the little sideways paper. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the stuff I was thinking about. I was also, uh, I totally went through different pens. Uh, because I hated the pen that I had started with. Just one stamp. Last stamp on that page. See, this is where that's a little... Mm. 
Well, the blank space there. But then again, this was six months ago. I also had considered as I made it that I would make mistakes. They'd be missorted. I'd need to go back, fill them, you know, put them in the proper place. And if I didn't leave enough space, then I wouldn't be able to uh, fit them. So this is me being a little too gracious. But that's the explanation for that. Sorry guys, I'm still trying to figure out how to get uh, proper videos here. So this uh, is a continuation of Canada. Looks like Elizabeth II. Most of his worldwide collection. Um, it's a lot of, um, I mean, there's definitely some 1800s, uh, late 1800s, but it's mainly early 1900s to like the 1970s. He's got some 80s too, but around the 90s, he pretty much dropped off, stopped collecting, I think. Put these one backwards because you can actually just visibly see the the, the watermark. I'm pretty sure this is going to be quite a nice long video here. But if you're into this kind of stuff, then you may enjoy taking a look. I mean, he collected, I assume, most of his life. I never. I can't remember if I asked him or never did, but, um, yeah, I mean, he definitely had some stamps, um, this has all been educational, that's probably part of why he did it, plus, I mean, it was just his generation, big stamp collecting generation, too. some clear pages here actually I did this today <laughs> um, when I was uh, like as I went through all of his envelopes um, some of the stamps were misorted so I kept them all in a pile and um, I was gonna make a actual section in the back I was gonna call the oops section well, actually, I'm just going to mention this one was, uh, this one here, this flower stamp, 18 bucks. Go figure. But, um, yeah, I had a stock card full of all kinds of stuff. And, uh, that had been missorted by either me or him. And probably both of us, I think. And, uh, I was going to make an oops section. I didn't. I decided to go and fit them all in here. So that's actually what I was doing today was... To put in the last stamps in. I promised myself that I was going to see this through to the end. Every single, excuse my stomach if you heard that, uh, every single stamp. Uh, so this this has been just the most massive undertaking, <laughs> to be honest. Um, however, now I have this fantastic album that I get to take with me and show my family and friends and just pretty much enjoy myself. Uh, maybe one day I pass it on. There's another one. I just couldn't figure it out. I really tried with that one too. Gosh. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. Um, I, I could not get that stamp figured out. Well, you can't see it. Focus. It's not going to focus. There you go. So. Come 
Colombia, Costa Rica. I always call the Stamp King Baby Head. And Alfonso the Eighth, King Alfonso. That's a good one. 1875 to 79. Denmark. Hmm, nice postmarks. Look at all of those. That's also a fantastic postmark right there. God dang. Super clear. 1958. 10th of March. 1445. Beautiful. Sock on the nose, that one. So this guy is actually uh, potentially valuable. Uh, I did verify it is a Type 2, so it's supposed to be... F actually, um, they didn't have a used value in the catalog, so... Um, I went looking around and found it anywhere from $70 to $200 on the internet. You know, eBay, hip stamps, so... Uh, that was actually one of the first high-value stamps of his that I'd ever come across. Um, surprising. It's definitely faded and old. These ones don't have horrible value either. A couple bucks almost. It's French stamps here. Yeah, that other stamp was uh, the first stamp I learned about uh, perforates likely being older and just more valuable. He has all kinds of different stuff here. These French stamps I learned you can barely see the horizon and the sun on the stamp. That makes this an earlier series. I like that postmark, it's nice. The sower. He had a lot of France. He also had quite a lot of Germany, too. Honestly, it's such a joy to be finished with this. I'm actually moving on to his United States uh, next, but it's just, uh, it's a nice feeling of completion. It's like, ah, whew. Man, it took forever. Hmm. Fun to look at. I like it. It's like walking through a time machine here. See, see what used to be standard. Definitely 
had a lot of that 50 cent. <laughs> Nice postmark, 35. Got a perf in here. Chuck Cartier. Mm -hmm. I took three years of French myself, and I can barely say anything at all. Prussia Reunion is an island. Hmm. That's cool. However, the perfs are cut off, so somebody totally butchered it and they took it off the envelope that's why I put about 375 because uh, in all of these catalog values um, I just basically did used or mint never hinged now in reality uh, when I put a mint never hinged value on a lot of these maybe they, they probably are hinged um, so uh, all of these values are you know taken with a grain of salt but um, the used ones are pretty much, you know, pretty accurate. But um, yeah, at least for the ones of value, oh, that was very minimal. I didn't bother to try and come up with what I thought the value would be. I just followed the catalog. So. But these German stamps, um, if you saw the other page, buck fifty, buck forty. These didn't have the worst values ever. They're also nice to look at. Pretty colors. This is the inflationary period here. 800,000, 10 million, 30 million. Yeah. The Hindenburg guy, Mr. Uh, Paul von Hindenburg. My stomach is growling away. <laughs> so, a bunch more Hindenburg. The uh, German postal horn. I'm not sure if it's German, but it's definitely the postal horn. So, this is actually the highest value. Uh, yeah, I think the highest value thing, single thing that he may have left me, period. Uh, this is a vertical strip of uh, this German postal horn stamp, and this is truly mint never hinged. So they go for 19 a piece. There's 19 of them, so that's about 360 bucks catalog value for this strip. And uh, to be honest, I could probably get every bit of that. I think they're in fantastic, perfect condition. Uh, except for one little thing, uh, come to think of it, uh, this was folded, blocks of six folded, so it was, looked like a block of six, but then it unfolded into this, so these perfs here, I think, uh, one of these perfs are going to have, um, have been folded, unfortunately, but other than that, they are absolutely immaculate, so it's beautiful. Very, very cool. Thanks, Gramps.
That was fun looking that one up. The emergency tax stamp for Berlin. Total back of book stuff. Jeez, that was tough for me to figure out. Yeah, these bells. Um, these bells are worth stuff. Thirty-two fifty a piece used. And this one's twenty bucks a piece too for those guys. Not bad. Also got a couple more on this page as well. Yeah, so seventy-eight bucks for those four stamps. Not bad. Germany definitely was one of his higher values. I think this is one of the only swastikas that he had. These are just some airmail labels. That also took forever to figure out too. East Germany, the Dutch Democratic Republic. to Great Britain. Now Great Britain was big too. Um, yeah, the F and G's. Holy F and G, you know what I'm saying? $50. Hmm, I wasn't 100% sure about which number that was. It's almost like I didn't want to believe it. Like 146? Or number 146? Like, really? Could be. I did my best. Some it, this it was really tough. Some of this uh, stuff to figure out, just to be confident. A lot of variables. Things fade. Can't see the watermark. Stamps in crappy enough condition. You just can't tell. Uh, maybe the perfs are bad enough. You know. A lot of things can make it difficult. This is why people strive to have good quality stamps in their collection, so that they're more easily identified. You know. I'm starting to believe in that. After going through this stuff, he definitely had some stamps that were not worth worth my time, but I took the time anyway. I kept every single one. Uh, I think that there was like two or something actually that were basically a half a stamp, so I tossed them. There was no point in that. I had my limits. <laughs> Post, post cancellation there. Yes, I had plenty of these guys. So, um, yeah, every single one of these, I couldn't see the watermark. I actually couldn't think of it because there's some paper or whatever. Um, well, most of these are on paper, so I said it's either 161 or 89, and it's 50 cents to a buck 75. So. At least I'm honest, you know, I didn't fudge anything. This is as accurate as I was able to be. Hmm. It's about 13 bucks for that one. Not bad. Yeah, I bought a label maker and all these sheets and stuff and went to town on this bad boy. Hong Kong, yeah, these uh, stamps have a 450 piece, pretty decent value. Hungary. These are Bosnia and Herzegovina, the province of Austria and Hungary. As I look at these, I have flashbacks of uh, cataloging them. <laughs> Pain in the butt. <laughs> India is also f quite a tricky little thing. There's like a uh, hundred provinces in India. These are all official.
Refugee relief overprint. See this this stuff I have trouble. Laid paper. I'm not hundred percent confident, see. But um it should be seven fifty for that stamp. Indonesia. This looks just like a friend I used to have. <laughs> this guy. Some early Ireland stamps, 41-ish. Hmm, not bad. 1650 for for that guy. Off to Israel. Oh, that was it. <laughs> that was short. <laughs> Italy. This one I emphasize that I might need to uh, expertise it because the watermark seems to be inverted. It's interesting. Could be a rare find, potentially. Ivory Coast. It's an old one, 1883. Hmm. I remember measuring these for flat plate printing. This guy, I actually inquired from Mystic and had them tell me what this was. Spent five bucks <laughs> for the life of me. I could not find that out and I wanted to know what it was. Oh, it's just a tobacco revenue stamp, minimal catalog value, but at least I know. <laughs> That's the first stamp I've ever had to have help with. Except for the other ones that I didn't bother actually. I just gave up and I'm not gonna spend five dollars on every single one of these to figure out. They are. Sorry for the camera. No. 
There's King Baby Head again. Couple more keen baby heads. That guy got around. Russia. <clears throat> that guy's worth eight fifty. Not bad. He actually had a little block. <clears throat> Couple of cool stamps there. These are from White Russia. This is uh, the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. I had fun finding that one. <laughs> these two, actually. I think that one as well. All of these were a pain in the butt. Um, but I found it. I just thought they were Russian. I never would have thought they were Ukrainian. Gosh. So yeah, it's easy to uh, <clears throat> easy to look at it now, but uh, man, I just can't forget how much effort, how much work this has taken. <laughs> but at least I've made it into something I can be proud of. So that's good. At some point in my teenage years, I kind of acquired the habit of doing things like 90%. And this, I wanted to make sure I did it 100%. I didn't fudge on myself, I didn't take shortcuts, I didn't, it wasn't a single stamp that I didn't take the time to figure out to the best of my ability, so. The Scott catalog definitely helped, although it wasn't enough. I also needed stampworld.com and I built a bookmark of uh, uh, just a whole bunch of resources I have broken down into folders for identification or um, you know any, anything else I need. And basically, all of the resources at my disposal had to be used. So we made it to Yugoslavia. And that is it for the pages here. Next we'll get into what I might as well show you in the back here. He gave me this Captain Tim's album. Believe it or not, I actually took them out. Um, the reason that I did that was, for one thing, this whole album is falling on to absolute pieces. Uh, I mean, you try to turn a page in that album and it just breaks apart. 
Um, I found out recently that they're acidic, so bummer that I spent all the time doing this. Uh, I actually probably should have taken them off these pages, but they're cool to look at. Um, nonetheless, and I put them in these plastic protectors so that I can actually touch them without worrying about them falling and crumbling into pieces. So. These, uh, whoops, these actually, I ripped out, or I cut out uh, only the pages that had stamps, so there's at least one stamp per page on either side. And, um, these I also cataloged and identified. I actually uh, wasn't planning to, and like I said, I wanted to keep to my word, to myself, to do every single one he had, so... These actually, <clears throat> oops, these actually took uh, quite a while, quite a while indeed, <clears throat> excuse me. Just one Bulgaria in there. Canada. That one's a pretty shit shape, but it could have been worth about nine bucks. So yeah, I had done all those pages and then I decided to catalog these and I was like, wow, it's kind of like doing it all over again. <laughs> had to go A to Z. Couple Columbia. Yeah, most of these are unfortunately stuck on the pages. Pretty hard pressed to get um, most of these off of these pages anyways, come to think of it. They've been pretty well ad adhered. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. a big red overprint. I gotta take care of that. <laughs> See, I haven't done it yet. It, it never ends, honestly. It's like, holy crap. There's always something else to do. So yeah, I'm gonna just kind of blow through these because uh, these are all kind of crappy and this video is gonna take forever. So. Here's some France. Oh, um, I actually didn't do these uh, because they're in further up in the collection anyway, so why bother? I've already cataloged those. Yeah. Gotta cut, cut it the time a little bit somehow, honestly. But, uh... Germany, North Germany, I wish these pages were a little easier to, to turn, fortunately, they're not the easiest, but it's Great Britain, not bad, since I couldn't see the watermarks on, on these, it was tough. That's actually my first um, 
I guess you call them penny reds, but it's not a real penny red. It's so never mind. It's not my first penny red. It's like a penny rose. Grease. So my uh, video screwed up. Here we are again. So. Uh, <coughs> Postal tax stamp. Guatemala. A little bit of Haiti. Nothing there. <laughs> A little hungry. That one's old. 1874, 76. India. Mm. Pretty sure this one's stuck on the page, but it could have been worth two dollars and seventy-five cents. Little Japan action. <laughs> so we got one. Malagasy Republic goes. Well, dang, I can barely even tell there is a stamp there. Wow, blends right in. Funny. So, uh, Buck 10, 1910, 26. Uh, I wasn't sure which one it is. Hmm. Pretty sure I need to see the watermark. Afrique Occidental Francaise at some point. I knew exactly that's like. It's not. Uh, it's f f French West Africa, I think. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay. So, one Poland stamp on that album. Someone here. Uh, 
Oh, interesting. That was a rare one. Yeah, that's right. Um, 110 bucks. Uh, I'd say that's the highest value stamp in here. And, um, Crapola. As I look at this, I am not sure that I actually identified this one. Oh, so there's two. I forgot two. Darn, I missed Benjamin here. It's weird. I kind of feel like I remember looking it up. Mm. That's on me. I know that there's two in here I still need to do now. Okay, okay. So Reunion, that's that French island. Pretty similar to the other one that we just had. From French West Africa, if I'm not mistaken. These are definitely the oldest pages of any kind of book that I have. <laughs> At least they didn't weather time well. Spain. Okay, we got Straight Settlement. Buck 10 from 1912, 23. Togo. It's a pretty common stamp. It's like Coconut Groves, if I'm not mistaken. States of America. So uh, this was the you know, these ones here, and um, these guys are the last that actually had any stamps on them, uh, except for this. That is South Africa. So I didn't identify any of these United States because this is the worldwide album, and these United States stamps just so happen to be stuck on the back of this random album page. And they're completely stuck. Uh, I, I, they're not coming off. And pretty sure most all of them are minimal catalog value, so fuck it. Uh, I don't see anything here that looks special, and the fact that they're all stuck on there, they're screwed. So, you know. Uh, maybe when I, since I am about to do his United States collection, uh, maybe I'll uh, bother to catalog those when I do we'll see but yeah that was it that's it for the worldwide this is the album that the pages came out of in the back here uh, ivory captain Tim's ivory stamp club album uh, I went and looked this up you can absolutely find this right there on eBay 20 bucks it's not worth shit but uh, it is cool and uh, yeah since the pages break apart I just made it so that we can't uh, mess it up uh, that much more so that's my world grandpa's worldwide stamps now since i actually started filming this video uh it's been like a couple weeks uh, i've shown a few people the album and i just uh tweaked it just today i put it in this different nice red binder and um let me take you off of here Oops. so uh, yeah, I took it off of, um, or, uh, I took it off of this, took, I just did it actually, I took it out of this, uh, this guy, cause these suck, uh, all the pages get caught on these, it's cheap, so I just, uh, got a new binder with a slip case, and I did have to trim the green pages to get them to fit, but I think that I like this much more overall, so, this is all gonna look pretty on the shelf, and it's, it's nice, so, uh, unfortunately, I did end up, uh, when I, when I'm just getting into his United States, uh, stuff, which, that's a little bit, I have to sort into what I had already done, which is, um, all the years, the oldest one he had was 98 up to, uh, not 2020, I did make a 2020 folder, but, whew, well, Dusty, you can tell it's been sitting, I got stuff of his in the stock books, so, um, yeah, these guys all need to be, um, <sighs> sorted into the years and stuff, so I'm going to get into that, uh, next is United States stuff, and so, hope you guys enjoyed, take care, bye.
I forgot to mention, uh, I found this uh, little envelope with a question mark on it in his United States bin here. And I'll be darned, more worldwide stamps still hanging out that I need to figure out. So, la-ti-da.